Campus. Explored. Friends. Made. Food. Definitely eaten. So what's next on our quest to definitively chart the freshest experience? I reckon exploring Exeter City and Devon more widely sounds like a good idea. I'm Liv Harvey. And I'm Lottie Rayner. And this is XTV's Ultimate Freshers Bucket List. County of Devon, surpassed only by Plymouth. But we definitely do not talk about Plymouth here. In case anyone is interested, the smallest town in Devon is the town of Beer, which has a population of 1,317 people. Not to do with freshers at all, but just a fun fact for you, fact fans. <laughs> As the most southwesterly Roman fortified settlement, Exeter has sat on the River X since it was founded in 55 BC. A city that has been around for two millennia is brimming in culture. So today, we thought we'd take a slightly more cultural look at Exeter. Sure, freshers can be a messy and crazy mm. experience. But we thought it would be nice to take stock and really appreciate the beautiful city that we live in. Though this comes two days after segments about partying, clubbing and making friends because, well, priorities. As you can tell, we are brimming of pub quiz winning facts about Exeter. So we decided to send Lottie and Callum to explore more of the city and tick off another item on our bucket list, immerse yourself in the culture. Over to you Lottie. 25th of August 1682, four witches were hanged right here, the last in England. But the events that led up to these hangings would have dark consequences for the next hundred years. This is the story, hey! What are you doing? Oh, I was going to ask you the same thing, you're ruining my shot. Okay, well you're ruining history. Oh really, how am I doing that? Um, well the Biddeford witches weren't even hanged here. Oh sorry, that changes everything. Well I just think that these deeply wronged women would appreciate if you didn't desecrate their legacy. I'm not to speak ill of the dead, but that's exactly what they are. I really don't think they're going to mind. Okay, well what about their descendants? I've got a film to make here, okay? So if you kindly just bugger off. Okay. I am here to protect Temperance Lloyd, Susanna Edwards, Mary Trembles, Alice Molland, and anyone else that your film targets. Who? Oh my god, the Biddeford Witches. What do you even know about them? Oh, did you know that Lloyd was accused of killing people with black art and she confessed to it? Or the fact that they betrayed each other? Trembles said that Edwards led her astray and Edwards blamed Lloyd. That could make a really interesting plot point, actually. I'm going to get that down. Oh my god, you're worse than the mural on Musgrove Row outside the library. Okay, what about Richard Wilkins, the only Devonshire man to be tried and executed as a witch? That's just not really relevant, though, is it? I mean, oh, this is fiction. I'm kind of just doing what I want. Do you feel no historical responsibility? No. Okay. Well, what other landmarks are you planning on desecrating? Oh, we were trying to get into the underground tunnels, but they wouldn't give us permission. Thank God. I oh, know, right? That's why we were going to do the final confrontation with Redvers Buller. What? So we're currently casting the role. Uh, we wanted Colin Farrell, but he was far too expensive. So we're currently going for a kind of uh, Vincent Price in Witchfinder General type vibe. Why on earth are you casting the role of Redvers Buller? He lived centuries after the hangings. 7th of December, 1839 to 2nd of June, 1908, to be precise. Well, we need an antagonist. He seemed perfect. He was commander-in-chief in the Second Boer War in South Africa and won a Victorian Cross. How did he seem like the perfect antagonist? Just look at him. He might be a controversial character, but some would consider him a hero. He saved loads of lives risking his own. And if this film comes out, all people are going to think of him is that he's some witch fighter. Uh, look, if anybody turns to a piece of fiction for historical fact, that's their problem, not mine. Have you seen Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? I don't believe for a second that Honest Abe was a vamp killer. Doesn't stop the film being awesome. You want to know about General Buller there? Go and read a book or watch a documentary. I'm making a piece of fiction that draws on Exeter's history and weaves it into a kind of metafictional tapestry. I have no allegiance to fact, and I shouldn't have. But you're taking a man's name and image. He existed, you've got to be true to that. Why? Because he had that right. <laughs> what resemblance do you think fiction bears to reality? Because as far as I see it, they couldn't be further apart. How so? <laughs> fiction relies on structures, right? Three acts, maybe five acts. It has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Overarching themes, otherwise the whole thing becomes chaotic. What overarching themes do you think Redvers Buller's life was trying to express or discuss? But 
you're implicitly relying on the fact that he existed. You're relying on things that he did. So? I can change anything. I, say these walls, right? They were first built here by the Romans, yeah? yeah? So instead, I could tell a story about how the last surviving humans came to Exeter and, and took refuge here and uh, kept out alien invaders with force fields. Oh, I could talk about themes of colonisation, uh, occupation in new and innovative ways. But you're using those characters, the Biddeford Witches, Redvers Buller, you're lying. If it doesn't matter, then why not well, create new characters? Just because Redvers Buller never stopped a blood sacrifice at Exeter Cathedral. Oh, well, yes, that didn't happen. But I'm in the realm of fiction, right? Everything that didn't happen. I don't understand why it's so hard for you to just be accurate. Because that's not my job. My job's telling stories, right? And hopefully, stories people are going to like. And though you may not think it, I do actually care about Exeter's history. That's why it's the raw material for my film, okay? Hopefully, people enjoy the film and they'll go away and do their own research, right? Oh, Redvers Buller was badass in that film. I'm going to go and see if he was that cool in real life. Or, well, I wonder if that was really the place where the Exeter witches were finally hanged, okay? I'm trying to make people care enough that they go and do it for themselves. I guess we're just coming at it from opposing perspectives. All I can say is good luck. Uh, are you sure you don't want to hang around? We're off to the Royal Albert Memorial Museum. We're going to shoot that scene where the witches make all the exhibits come to life. Oh my god. What? Well, after that, I feel more cultured than the old Lafrada showers. Wait, what? You know, like bacterial culture. It, it was a joke. Please never do that again. It was kind of funny. Absolutely not. Well, like your dad on a family holiday, we've now stopped and reflected on the culture and history that Exeter has to offer. But the man-made elements can be just as exciting as the natural ones. On a day-to-day -day basis, you're probably going to see seagulls and an occasional fox, which admittedly aren't that exciting. But Exeter does have amazing nature if you know where to look. And luckily, we had just the girl for it. So sit back and enjoy as Ish takes us through the nature of Exeter. I can't wait to badger her for some more facts later. That was so forced. Please stop. Hello, and welcome to the Freshers Ultimate Bucket List. Today, we'll be ticking off our appreciation of nature. We'll also be showing you why the University of Exeter is one of the most beautiful places to study in this country. Our campus offers a unique environment in which to study with beautiful lakes, parkland, woodland and gardens to enjoy throughout the year. With country walks, wildlife and spectacular scenery to relax after a long day studying. We'll show you three areas to investigate. These are the woodland and gardens of Reed Hall, the woodland walks west of Amory and the woodland parks east of the business school. Some wildlife residents to look out for are the rabbits, the fish, the butterflies, the moorhens and even the ducks. And we even have some turtles in the ponds to look out for. If you want to go further afield from Reed Hall Gardens, then why not check out some of the spots on the east side of the campus? Let's find out! There's a wide range of information placards situated around the university for you to enjoy. This one's about the Valley Ponds. This is a habitat in which a variety of waterfowl often nest and regularly raise their young. Let's have a look!
Good luck with your studies at the University of Exeter. Remember, if you ever need a place to relax or enjoy the comforts of nature, it's only a few footsteps away. Now we've had time to explore our wonderful city, it's time to head slightly further afield. Or should we say slightly further a beach? That makes absolutely no sense, it's genuinely your worst one yet. Exworth is only a short train ride away from Exeter. Having the beach on your doorstep is genuinely one of the nicest things about Exeter and the summer term and generally just a nice way to see off the summer term. This quaint seaside town is popular with students during the summer term who flock there to soak up the sun or maybe have a barbecue to celebrate the end of exams. But what else does Exmouth have to offer? How much does it cost to get there? Why am I talking in rhetorical questions? Well, thankfully, Ben Hopley is the man to answer two out of three of those questions. So enjoy his guide to Exmouth as we take another item off our bucket list.
wonderfully relaxing and cultured day. Genuinely such a nice break after the madness of the past mm. few days. Oh no, challenge four. I take back everything I said about it being relaxing. Liv and Lottie. Today we want you to give us a tour of the city, giving insight into Exeter's most important sites and locations. That sounds lovely and relaxing, doesn't it? Well, unfortunately not, because you shall be giving us the tour whilst also racing against oh, each other. We have envelopes like this one at four key Exeter locations. The first to read said location has to present the information on the given card and in doing so shall gain a point. The winner is the one with the most points at the end of the race. The first card is in the form and you present that together. But as soon as you've finished reading, the, the race, race is on. on. I think a change of clothes is in order. The forum card. So this is the forum, the central hub of the University of Exeter. Opened in May 2012 by Her Majesty the Queen and costing £48 million to build, the forum contains the main library, shops, the student pub The Ram, a pret-a-manger, Costa Coffee, two banks, a lecture theatre, 12 seminar rooms, the career zone and most importantly <laughs> the XTV office. The next location is the Imperial, so get running. Can you actually just hold that for me? Yes, of course. Oh, oh, and Liv is off. Just don't like running. Running! <laughs> I was not expecting this level of competition! Oh my god, I'm dying. Just take a minute. Oh Christ. This is not fun. Do I lose a point for this? The Imperial. Well, here you are at the Imperial Weatherspoons. Before spilling facts about this glorious booze palace, we should mention something we probably should have brought up earlier. At each location, we've organised transport to get you to the next location. Hello. I'm not OK. <laughs> Though your initial thoughts may be, hooray, at least I don't have to run anymore, you may like it less when you see what we've got in store for you. <coughs> anyway, on with the facts. This is the Imperial, no fondly as the MP, one of four Weatherspoons in Exeter. Expect silly amounts of your student loan to be forked over here. However, the cheapest flight is only two pounds, so it's not all bad. Now, off to the key side.
Throughout the year, events are held around the quay, everything from 10k runs to live music. Are you okay? Yeah, good. The area contains several shops, cafes, restaurants, pubs and bars, as well as a place where you can hire bikes or boats. Oh no. And while we've already used bikes, so vast landlubbers make like a pirate and take to the vast waters. Oh. This is going to be a yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of fun. The Double Locks is your next location. Oh my god, boat. Right, I boat down there. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my god, that is wobbly. Oh my god, we're capsizing. Hang on. Oh no, we're going back. We need to go beyond the right side of the room. I know where we're supposed to be going. I just don't know how to get there. If Callum starts flipping paddling, I can kick off. I'm ruining the wedding. What my oh there's a pain. I will try and get out of your way. It just might be a bit slower. Me doing this all by myself with no help. You are literally cheating. Oh, 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 oh no. Look, watch out for the speedboat. Oh, we've hit it. We've fully hit it. Oh my god, we've hit it. We've accidentally had a small <laughs> collision. <laughs> that little seven year old on that canoe was flipping flying compared to us. They're like for those. Well, now we're just stuck in the middle in front of a boat. Stop paddling towards the boat. Okay, okay, we can all point fingers. You can, because it should point for the you. They should not! Oh my god, they're gonna crash into us. Yeah, well you can do it. Go out, get off. Bye, thanks for the, the push off. Listen, listen to Callum giving the orders. Come on, Lottie, You're hurry up. You're to wait for them. Hurry up, catch them. Oh. <laughs> I despise you. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. Well, we got a bit lost. Haven't seen Lottie and Callum in quite some time. However, I am better at rowing than running. And I think I got it in the bag. So have a chill now. Go for a walk. There's a pub up the road actually. Oh, up the water. There we go. Oh, I actually can see them. You got back from double locks. Yeah. You did not get back from double locks, you sheep. Oh my god, this is really low. Ah! Ah! Oh, but we should steer better. We've been stuck on that. Yeah. Def oh, you crashed. Turns out I can't run, I can cycle, and evidently I can I can boat. You cannot Row. boat. You cheated the whole I way. Didn't. Where's your we'll, proof? We'll just in all of the filming. Okay. <laughs> so Jamie is a what was that? A national rowing medal holder. Right. It's not my fault that Jamie happened to end up in my boat. It was luck. He didn't have to row. To be fair, I needed the help. I won, I'm very, very proud to say, and I did it honestly. Only time I didn't do it honestly was when Callum literally would not listen to me, picked up the oar and steered <laughs> us into a stinging nettle bush. So I'm now covered in blackberries and stinging nettles. Um, ours was lovely. Was it? Yeah. Was it lovely, really? Peaceful? Saw so I'm swan? very happy to say that I won that challenge. 
what about half a point each? No, definitely uh, not. I got here first, so. Through cheesing. A cool mile and a half away from Exeter's Quayside. Yeah, bloody right. Not very the cool. The Double Locks is a popular end point for those looking for a relaxing walk. <gasps> yeah, I'm sure it's bloody relaxing. Through nature or a refreshing boat journey. Well, that's bloody ironic. It also plays host to Hijacked Festival, a one-day music festival at the end of the academic year. But congratulations, the race is now done. You've boated 1.5 miles, cycled 1.5 miles, and run 0.7 miles. Quite the triathlon. <laughs> now for the bad news. These boats need to be back to the rental store in Exeter. No. In 30 minutes. I'm going to walk. I'm off. <laughs> Look at this. This has been the fourth day of Freshers Week. Today we've covered nature, culture and history, eczema, and given you a very scenic tour through Exeter. Join us tomorrow for the final instalment. I've been Liv Harvey, and I've been Lottie Rayner, and this has been XTV's Ultimate, Ultimate Freshers Bucket List.